uh, in the 1920s, there were a million black farmers. Uh, I'm a descendant of them. Uh, today, there are about 30,000. Sure, the number of farmers in general have declined over time. But for black farmers, discrimination from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, from banks and suppliers, have made it especially difficult to stay on the land. The TV show Queen Sugar from Ava DuVernay on the Oprah Winfrey Network tells that story. Today, we learned of yet another way black farmers are up against it. The Black Farmers and Agriculturalists Association have filed suit against Stein Seed Company, charging they sold defective soybean seeds to black farmers. Last month, a federal judge said that these allegations are serious and ordered the parties to sit down for 60 days and try to come to a settlement. Joining us now is Thomas Burrell, president of the Black Farmers and Agriculturalists Association. How are you, Mr. Burrell? Jackie, how are you? Good I, health and excellent spirits. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear. So how did you discover that the seeds that you received were faulty? Well, keep in mind that we represent African-American farmers, and these farmers started to allege and keep records that their soybean plants were not germinating properly. That is to say they were not sprouting, they were not growing, they were not reproducing, they were not developing. And particularly during the fall of 2017, when it was time to harvest these plants, they contacted our office uh, I, in turn, call the corporate headquarters of Stein. Stein is the largest private seed manufacturer in the world, a multi-billion dollar company. And I indicated to them that our members were having problems with the soybean seeds and asked them to send down their scientists, i.e. their agronomists, before these farmers started to harvest so they, Stein, would be able to, uh, shall we say, visit the scene of the crime mm -hmm. to determine for themselves. Keep in mind, this organization has a patent on their products. They have over 900 patents. So mm. if there is any question regarding the fertility or the progeny, that is to say the sons and daughters of their certified seeds, they better than anybody would have been able to test. And they came down, acknowledged that there was a problem, but they did absolutely nothing. And subsequently, this association did what we do as a civil rights organization we filed a suit in federal district court for the Western District of Tennessee on behalf of black farmers and their heirs in Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Mm. Well, can you give me an estimate of about how much money, <laughs> quite frankly, that the farmers have lost as a result of not being able to get a, a harvest because of these defective seeds? Well, directly, uh, they filed this lawsuit under a statute known as RICO, the Racketeer influence corrupt organization statutes, which provides for treble damages, as it were. These farmers believe that they have been damaged to at least the tune of 25 to $30 million. Wow. They have been damaged in their business and in their property. It is difficult, Jackie, all along, mm. for an African-American in general to get a loan to sustain their business. Yep. Here, these black farmers, as you said, there were, for all intents and purposes, a million black farmers in uh, 1920. Now there are less than 30,000, we believe even fewer. They have difficulty getting loans to start with. Now this group was able to get a loan, but here again, because of systemic and continued discrimination, a private entity now wanted to deliver the fatal or the final blow. And that is, sure, now you got a loan, now you have equipment, now you have million dollar operations, but we're going to sell you defective seeds. Wow. The problem with that, in this particular case, Jackie, is this, this corporation didn't look around and say, well, you know what, we've got some seeds left. We want to get rid of some bad seeds, and there are some bad seeds in the corner. We'll sell those to black farmers. It's not that they were looking for bad seeds. They deliberately contacted other sources and ask them, in effect, do you have seeds that are not certified? Mm -hmm. And then was able to get those sources to ship those bad seeds to these farmers. We're saying that this is so blatant. This is an egregious act, a continued act of racial discrimination against not only the African-American community in general, as your guests were talking about earlier, blackface, people who are stereotypically uh, discriminating against black individuals, whether in effigy, or whether it's against black farmers. And keep in mind, this is nothing more than continued discrimination. 
We had those seeds tested by a reputable source, uh, Mississippi Department of Agriculture and the Mississippi State University, and those seeds came back. The test proved what the farmers were alleging, mm -hmm. that the germination, the ability to reproduce was Z Rose Jackie. Wow. wow. Well, just to let you know, Jackie is our producer. Um, but I, I'm so glad. That's all right. <laughs> My name is Dr. Avis. But let me just ask you one last quick question. You know, what do you think is the prognosis for you all to be able to get some sort of significant settlement given that the damages are so high? Well, keep in mind, let me apologize, Dr. Avis, for okay. the mistake. Now, we've been talking to Jackie. But at any rate, we will leave the damages are high because keep in mind, uh, these individuals have been damaged in their property. Mm -hmm. They technically could be out of business. Yes. Just as you said, there are, for all intents and purposes, a million black farmers in 1920. It is the accumulative effect of the racial discrimination that has led to this demise, this decline. Uh, you're now talking about a handful of individuals who have survived the gauntlet. So the court should throw the book, as it were, at this corporation because uh, black businesses in general have failed, whether we're talking about the hair care industry, have been put out of business, uh, African Americans in the service industry, the construction industry, and elsewhere. Black farmers have been the victims of discrimination, but they are one group. This group has survived the gauntlet, as it were. And keep in mind, we've been in this business, we've been in this country now for over 400 years. So yes, this, comp this company should pay. Uh, the farmers have been ordered to go to mediation, which is a step toward settlement. But if they're not satisfied with mediation, they will have a right then to have their case heard before a, peer, uh, a jury of their peers. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, uh, they're not gonna just take anything because they've been damaged too severely. And therefore we believe that a full measure of justice should be made available to them. The maximum amount of injury uh, should deserve the maximum amount of damages. Thank you so much, Mr. Burrell, for fighting for these farmers. As a uh, proud granddaughter of farmers, I'm so happy that you do what you do. Thanks for joining us today. Yes. Absolutely. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.